Hi and welcome to the 5th of National Disability Services webinar series on using the Organisational Readiness Self-Assessment Toolkit. I'm Karen Stace. Over the last few webinars we've shared with you some of the tools that we use as sector support consultants to assist providers to think about what the National Disability Insurance Scheme and participant choice and control might mean for the way you manage your organisation. In this webinar, we're going to look at the self-assessment readiness tool, which gives you a framework to undertake a methodical review of your current business model. This is, this is at the heart of the toolkit's value for providers, because many have never had to undertake this exercise before, and some tell us that they are not quite sure where to start with such a process. The self-assessment tool is organised as a series of checklists. Each checklist requires you to assess your organisation's capabilities in relation to a particular issue of business management. 31 of these issues are organised under seven domains. Those domains are strategy, governance, financial sustainability, people and capability, clients and market focus, knowledge and information management, and quality measurement and improvement. Getting started on this checklist begins at the dashboard. The page on the website you may come to when you log in or that you can reach at any time from the navigation menu at the left hand side on most of the pages. The first thing to note about the dashboard is that it offers you access to a number of elements of the tool which require data to be entered. These include data about your organisation, about your readiness or the self-assessment checklists and about your financial position. This data may need to be entered and amended. You can do this on checklists you have already completed by returning to those pages and selecting the Edit option. Updating information about your organisation's capabilities, financial position and service delivery profile will have an impact on the reports which this data is used to generate. This reflects the design of the toolkit as a benchmarking tool. It allows you to track your progress toward getting ready for the NDIS over time and check how successful the strategies that you have implemented have been. The toolkit also enables you to compare your current readiness against similar organisations in the sector as another indicator of how your organisation is positioned at different points in time. The NDIS is a market-based system and is and will be dynamic and constantly changing. Understanding how your own capabilities are growing or weakening is important business management information for decision makers in your organisation. The dashboard page is the point from which you can begin or resume work on the readiness self-assessment exercise, the key financial ratios tools and lodge data for benchmarking reports. There's also functionality which allows you to print off the work you've done so far as a PDF document. The dashboard also contains summary information about the extent to which you have completed the various parts of the tool and reminders of deadlines for lodging data required to generate benchmarking reports. You'll notice on the dashboard page that there are two headings, dashboard and benchmarking. The hyperlink with your organisation name and draft is a quick entry point to an overview of the self-assessment checklists. The hyperlink about your organisation takes you to the checklist which gathers information about several key parameters of your organisation's business, including income level, service mix and so on. This is used to establish your organisation's peer group for benchmarking purposes and is only seen by NDS staff responsible for generating those reports. Back on the dashboard, the final hyperlink key financial ratios tools takes you to the page on which information from your annual financial statements can be entered. We'll be taking a closer look at this page and those tools in the next webinar. Click on the hyperlink self-assessment readiness tool. By default this will take you through to the first of the seven readiness domains, strategy. And it, and it will take you to the first of the good practice indicators for this domain which covers strategy, and strategic planning processes. The page is divided into three sections under three headings. The first is ratings and plans. This requires you to self-assess your organisation capabilities against desired practices and advanced practices. 
As you can see, the toolkit identifies a number of practices under these two headings. Looking under the Ratings and Plans headings again, there are four subheadings. These three of these have drop-down multiple choice menus, indicated by the little arrow. The first asks you to rate your current level of capability in relation to this issue. You are given six choices from Not Relevant, through Not All Desired Practices, to Rating Level 3, where you have all of the desired practices. Beyond that, you might determine that you are either at Rating Level 4, which would indicate that you have all of the desired practices and some of the advanced practices, or you may actually think that you're at rating level 5, which would indicate that you have all of the desired practices and most, if not all, of the advanced practices. Having made a judgement about your current capabilities, you are invited to consider whether this is something that you are happy with, or whether you see room for improvement. Remember that as a general rule of thumb, most organisations will need to be at level 3 for most indicators. Chances are that your organisation will identify gaps between where you see yourself now and where you see yourself needing to be in 18 months on at least some of the indicators. This is the opportunity to capture that insight and commit your organisation to a desired rating for the end of the 18 month time frame. By identifying the level of priority you give to achieving that desired rating for a particular indicator, you can shape the development plan you are building for your organisation. This will essentially be made up of development plan notes that you make for yourself as you work through the checklist. These are opportunities to sketch out the individual tasks and organisational strategies required to build capabilities in those areas where you have identified room for improvement. Another way to approach the self-assessment process is to review the full 31 benchmark indicators and then decide what ratings you want to achieve against them and how you plan to achieve that. In other words, once you have a bird's eye view of the range of the challenges confronting you and the resources you've got available to do something about them. However you do it, your organisation will really benefit from taking some time to stop and think about your answers. There's always the temptation to tick the box and move on, to say, yeah, we do that or we've got that, without stopping to ask, do we really? But this is the perfect opportunity to really test some of the things you might take for granted about how you operate. In finishing off this presentation, it will pay to have a quick preview of the reports page, which can also be accessed from the dashboard. The reports page gives you access to three kinds of report, which the data you enter into the tool is used to generate. The first is the benchmarking tool, the second is the gap analysis, and the third is the development plan. Benchmarking is the practice of measuring performance using a specific indicator, in this case, your level of confidence about your organisation's capabilities in terms of getting ready for the NDIS. This process is used to assist the evaluation of your business processes by establishing both measures of good practice and a peer group defined for the purposes of comparison. This allows organisations to develop plans on how to make improvements or adapt specific best practices with the aim of increasing some aspect of performance. Benchmarking is sometimes treated as a one-off event but it is better treated as a continuous process in which organisations continually seek to improve their practices and their performance. Providers participating in the benchmarking exercise need to complete the self-assessment checklists and submit the data via the benchmarking section on the, on the dashboard. Submissions are open for extended periods of time throughout the year and deadlines for each round are prominently displayed on the back dashboard page. The ratings you give your organisation against each of the 31 good practice indicators are collected and can be used to generate a gap analysis report from the reports webpage. This is a handy reference guide which you can use for internal benchmarking purposes to capture where your organisation stands at a particular point in time and how it has changed, hopefully for the better, with the course of time. Finally, the process of conducting a self-assessment self and developing the gap analysis includes an opportunity to identify the practical tasks 
you need to undertake to improve your performance in domains where your business practice is weak. As you work through the toolkit and, and add materials in the development plan field of each indicator, you are building a development plan that will capture and describe much of the workload you need to undertake to strengthen your business processes. To finish, let's return to the dashboard. Remembering that you can always find your way back to this point by clicking on the dashboard hyperlink on the menu on the left hand side of most pages. In the next webinar we will look at the financial ratios tool. This will assist you to benchmark your organisational performance with some concrete financial data, a critical piece of business and marketplace intelligence. Until then, happy benchmarking.